Good evening and welcome to this edition of Radio Pitch and Put, um, COVID edition. And this evening I am joined by perhaps one of the icons in the game, Mr. Dublin Pitch and Put, Derek Courtney. Good evening, Derek. Good evening, Frank, and thanks very much for having me on. Absolutely no problem. You're one of the icons of the game and it would be remiss of me not to have you on um, while while we're going through this pandemic. And I hope you and your family are all well and everybody is safe. Everyone's well at the moment, Frank, and, and thanks very much for the, the compliment. I don't regard myself in that high calibre, but thank you very much for your for your comment. Now, uh, Derek, um, we're going to do, just to let you and the listeners know, we're going to do a couple of one-on-one interviews over the next week or so. We have a, a couple of very um, big icons of the game lined up, past and present. Not that you're not past or anything, but um, you know. <laughs> uh, but we, we have a few, so uh, we want listeners to keep um, to keep tuned in. Derek, tell me about how you discovered the game of pitch and put. What age were you? How did you start playing? What's your history? Oh, you're bringing me back now, Frank. Um, I started playing, Frank, as kind of a young teenager, 12, 13 years of age. I lived in Talent in Dublin all my life, and my dad played a little bit, although not a member of any club. And we used to go for a few games on green fees around so the Bona Brinas and all that, anybody who knows it up in Dublin. And uh, when I got to about 13, um, I was introduced to a guy who was a member up in Glenville. And I went up there and I joined as a juvenile, um, along with a, a good friend of mine, Joe Dunhu. And a year later, my brother Paul joined. And we just played on our school holidays and, and he, we just, we took to it. And we loved it and we just, we just played day in. We used to bring our lunch up as kids and played all day. It was fantastic. Right. Were you, any, were you any good? Um, I'd have to say no. As a juvenile, Frank, I wasn't. I, I was. I, I was very ordinary. Um, I, I think in in my last year as a juvenile, I started to play reasonably well, um, and I and I won a good few competitions as a juvenile in Glenville in my last year. But I would have been about fifteen at the time. Um, I probably thought I was good then. I, I probably did start to think I was good. Um, but uh, as the next few years proved, I, I wasn't as good as I thought I was, really. You know? Were you on Dublin Intercounty or anything like that? or? No, not as a juvenile. I wouldn't have even been in. The... My brother actually played Intercounty. He was four years younger than me, and he playing with me, he probably he developed. And by the time he got to 13 or 14, he was an extremely good juvenile. But as a juvenile, no, I didn't develop quick enough as a player to have made that sort of team, no. Yeah, it's a, it's a similar story with, for example, me playing as a juvenile, Ray Murphy playing as a juvenile. We were never into county. We mm. were never, I was, no. I was shocked as a juvenile. But you mm. know, it's amazing how the the with the embedding of the of the rules or embedding of the the good play comes at you, um, from then. Mm. So when you so when you came out of juveniles, you got a handicap in Glenville, and you, did you play much? I then? did. I got. I. I tell you. See, I came out then. You see, as a juvenile, I was. I came down to handicaps, so by the time I came out of, of juveniles, I. I was scratch. Um, oh, well, yeah. with due respects, uh, the, we went. We hadn't the strongest juvenile section in Glenville, so after a couple of wins, the handicap died very quickly. Um, and I think as I come into the adult section, as a sixteen-year-old, I. Um, I struggled initially, and I think I got a seven handicap. Okay. Um, which, as, as a young man at the time, I, I was kind of insulted by it because I believed I was better than I was, and I took a, a, an exception to it. But I practiced a lot, and I, I, I quickly got the handicap down with, with a couple of wins. And I think by the end of the year, I think I had got the scratch in the in the adult section, you know, the other way. So, Very good. which was, uh, 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 I was delighted at the time. Excellent. So you're moving down through the thing. So you're still a young fella, and you're still at scratch, and and you're you're at scratch. And were yeah. you were you playing in external competitions, scratch cups, opens? Um, I did. I did. I think. I think if I go back through the years, I think that was around 1979. And I played. I played in all the county championships. I think in actually 79, I missed by missed out by a shot on the getting to a playoff for the Inter Dublin Stroke Play um, in Aaron's Oil. Um, because when I entered, I was an intermediate, and by the time it came around, and I was actually a senior. Um, but as the years went on, I did struggle. I'd have to say around 1980, 81, 82, I couldn't really get consistency, and I played an awful lot better in practice than I ever did when I put a card in my hand. Yeah. And um, 
I think it all turned for me, I think, Frank, in around 1983 or four, And I went to play in a scratch cup in Royal Mead. Um, and I just went to play and I just, I don't know. I just, I don't even realise, I didn't think I realised how well I was playing. And I won the scratch cup and it gave me a huge um, boost. And I, all of a sudden I realised I could win outside of Glenville. And I think that's when I started to kind of get a little bit of form. And from there... I, I kind of I got a couple of wins in the in 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 and around eighty four and eighty five and I, then I started to try to play well you know the type of way so yeah it's amazing how you can almost trace back I I know I can trace back to the moment when you thought oh my god I'm I'm almost as good as these good guys you know I can compete with them it's a it's very it's a very illuminating moment um okay so y- you obviously. Were winning scratch cups so at that stage were you well that was the only i won that one and it was years later before i won i, t- I tell you i'll tell you sorry frank is that yeah um as you know a very good friend of mine david hayden died there last year yes i was and, gonna ask um, you about david yeah i i remember and i and i said it at the funeral all the time because i was asked to say a few words and i said at the time that around that time frank i, I actually thought i have this beat and i i went to see a, a, a league match between old county and RGSC in RGSC because I'd heard about David Hayden and I'd heard about how good he was and I went down to see how good is this guy like he couldn't be that good like. yeah. and I remember walking out of the Rollstone Club a little bit demoralised realising wow I'm miles off the pace here because yeah. this guy is playing at a different level to what I am you know what I mean and I thought I was playing to a good level and I I, I, I I discovered after a few years, John, or Frank, that it's it's more the belief in yourself. Yes. I knew I could do the scores, but I didn't do them. Mm-hmm. They did the scores, and and eventually, when you get around, and I got to know David, and David and I became the best of friends, and you were huge fans, and right? yeah, and 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 we played into counties and all together. But it, you know, it's it, it's belief, and I honestly believe a lot of it is belief. And, and when you stand up against in any sport. And you look at your opponent, and if you believe he's going to beat you, he will. And I had a lot of confidence. I don't, I don't really believe I was kind of, well, other people, so other people to judge. I don't believe I was arrogant or cocky. I never intended to be. Yes. But in my heart, I knew oh, I was a good player. I'd never said it, um, and I wouldn't say it. And it's not for me to judge that, but it's, you know, it's, it, it is. It's in your head, and if you don't believe it, you'll never do it. Like Tiger Woods knows he was the best golfer in the world, and that's how he won most of the time. And and Ray Murphy, although Ray would never say it, Ray Murphy knew he was the best player, and and therefore he did it. You know the type of way. So yeah. it boils down to that, you know. But it was a great time and it, it, great memories. And I went from there on, Frank, and and, and I got a few Dublin titles and Dublin match plays, and and eventually then I just kept playing and playing, and I loved the game, Frank. And that, I think that was I loved the competition. I didn't like practicing. Yes. Um, but I did love the game, you know. Did you practice much? At that time, I didn't because I played everything. Yeah. I played everywhere. I played for Glenville in the league teams and I went to and I played on Saturdays and Sundays in competitions. And if I wasn't, I, I'd still hit a few balls on the opportunity I got. But I wasn't a huge practicer. But I did uh, play on the opportunity I got. But I played in everything. And when I, you practiced? I when- scratch cups. Yeah, when you did practice, was there anything specific that you did to practice? Was there any techniques you used? Was there any methods that you used, or was it just play? No, not not really. I, I I kind of had a funny thing about practice. I I if I didn't play well in practice, I stopped because it was I didn't want to lose confidence. Yes. And if I played well in practice, I wanted to stop because I didn't want to use the ball. The quick shot, <laughs> I was kind of superstitious yeah. that way. So it, it kind of. Um, it, you know, it was it was it was great times. I have great memories, Frank, and, and particularly back to the starting off and as the time went on. You know, yeah, very good. Um, so then breaking on to the national scene, how did you mm. cope with that, or when did that um, happen? Again, again with difficulty. It took me a good few years even to qualify. I, knew, I was playing well in Dublin. I think I think I won a, a Dublin match play in eighty five and a Dublin show play in 86 but I the first match play I ever qualified for was in 80 89 I'm trying to think of the year and it was the year David Hayden won the match play beat James Anglin in the final and um, 
That was in late. Yeah, that was in Lucan. And I, or Lucan, sorry, and yeah. In Lucan, 88 it could have been. I think it was yeah. 88 he won and then he retained it in 89. But like I'd been playing well for a few years, but I couldn't qualify for the match. So Dublin at that time, Dublin was very strong around the 80s and the 90s. Yes. There was a lot of good players and it was hard to qualify. Um, like, you know, with the Skinner Malones and the Sean Harkins was an unbelievable player. And, and then David Hayden. And you, know, you were kind of happy that David Hayden was the holder because he wasn't in the qualifiers. Yes. But there was loads of great players. I, I, I don't like to start naming them because it leaves some out, but I, there's scores of, of really good players. It was hard to qualify. Yeah. And then when I did qualify for Super, when I qualified in the one the year that David Hayden won in 88, I got beaten by the late uh, Terry Hanratty, um, oh, who was a great player from Dada. He was a great and, and ter- gentleman. Yeah, yeah, he was he, great fun. Yeah. He bet me, but I did struggle to qualify um, for them. Yeah. And obviously when you qualify, then you need a bit of luck in the draw. Yes, and as the as the match plays went on, um, I remember, I can remember a lot of the match plays. In '92, I qualified the year that Downs won in Royal Maid, yeah. and I lost out to William Hill in the quarterfinals. And again, I was starting to play well, and Willie was just too good. He just he had a little bit more experience than me, and I think yeah. he he was a really good player. He was at the one of the stroke play, and mm-hmm. he bet me easy enough. Um, and as the following year, then in '93, I went to Fermoy, and um, I ran into Downs and yeah, he was that was the year good. Liam O'Brien was it? Was it? That was the year Liam O'Brien. Um, yeah, um, Liam O'Brien won, but Liam O'Brien, like he was another great player. But um, but Downs met me in Fermoy, and I can honestly say, in all the years I've ever played pitch and putt, the one time that I played at my utmost and my best and lost was against Downs in Fermoy. He absolutely was unbelievable. He just I just couldn't get near him, and I hit I hit him with everything. And I just couldn't beat him. And and he went on. But then the following year, then I went to Glenville. And went, and by the time it went to Glenville, I was actually a member of Shandon. Yes. I had moved to Shandon. And, but I knew Glenville was a big opportunity for me because yeah. I knew I was playing well. And I I can't remember who I played in the first round of it, but I, I didn't play particularly well on the Saturday. And I, I got out of it um, on the Saturday. And when the Sunday and Monday came down, I just played... I played as well as I can, and I was in Glenville, so that gave me a huge opportunity. And thankfully, I took it. You know, the other way. So, and when your name is on that, it, cup, it was it great means, to get the monkey because at, yeah, at that time, lot. at that time, sorry for cutting across, but at, yeah. at that time, I, I hung around a lot with Sean Harkins, Skinner Malone, and David Hayden, who were on in the county teams, yes. and they all had their national titles. Yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> so it, it was kind of yeah, yeah. So it was great to get to know but no, it's it's it, and it is fantastic in that you're that you eventually get the monkey off your back, or that your name is on the cup. Because mm. that to me was was always a huge moment when your when your name is on the cup, yeah. and and it, yeah. it, it's it's a great feeling, and to, to, you feel on top of the world. And um, to, but just to, I just want to touch a little bit on the the Sean Downs match when you said that you played your best. Did you come off feeling? I played my best, you know, fair dues, he beat me, or was it still disappointment? No, it was huge disappointment. I, I remember thinking, you know, and there was a really good friend of mine, Robbie Ingram. I don't know whether you know Robbie. Robbie went everywhere with me. Yeah. And I, I remember, there's one thing I remember on the match. We, we played the first 80 in holes, and I turned two down. And I can't remember exactly the scores. I'm not one for remembering scores in match plays. I could never yeah. really... I, I couldn't tell you whether I finished three under or three over or ten under. I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. But I knew I was playing well and I was two down. And there was a small break of about five minutes while we were waiting to go out. And Robbie turned to me and he said to me, you need to get six twos on the next nine holes or he's going to do you. Yeah. That's exactly what Robbie said. And I did get me six twos in the nine holes and I was four down. Yeah. I'd gone from two. I'd lost. I, I'd, I'd gone and he had done me down. And yeah. I think he bet me five and four or something like that. But... I was playing at that, I was playing so well under pressure, I was playing really well, but every hole we played, mm. he seemed to be inside me every time, and I owned that, when you're two down, as you know, Frank, and yeah. you're putting, and you believe in your heart, heart of hearts that, I'm, I'm, this is only for a half, because he's not going to miss, Yeah, and yeah. that's how good Downs was, Downs, Downs was so that Downs was unbelievable. Immense, yeah. I remember yeah. I, I played him in some great matches myself. Um, but then the following year, then Glenville. Do you remember any of the specific matches, or was there any moments that you recall from that? 
in Glenville. Yeah, in Glenville when you won it. Um, not really. I can remember a lot of the players. I, the yeah. ones, I, I know about uh, Billy Farrell in the quarterfinals, and I actually beat. Um, you remember Paddy Desmond from Saint Stephen. I remember Paddy Desmond. Yeah, Paddy Desmond. He was the most. Um, Paddy at that time. Ever, yeah. That was a Paddy. I bet Paddy in, in Fermoy in the first match and then yeah. I bet him in the semi-finals of the but he was an absolute gentleman now, Paddy. Lovely I haven't Paddy, seen yeah. him in years. Yeah. And um, I don't remember much of the match. I know I won the matches. And even in the final, um, I know against Cahill Dunn from St. Bridget's, who yeah. played really well, Cahill Dunn, but he, he ran into a player playing well on the course he knew so well. Yeah. And I think I bet Cahill on four and three. I can remember the winning put, but yes. in relation to any other... Um, yeah. matches in. I, I, I vaguely remember them. I, I really do. But in saying that, you, you remember, I, I've, I've said it before, you remember the losses. I, I, I remember yes. Downs' loss more yeah. than I remember my win. Yeah. You know, and and there was other years after that too in in, in, in Lakeside, or no, in Lakewood and Cork in 99, I yeah. played really well and Sean Harkins, um, he done me in the quarterfinals and he was all over Sean, and, and I'm yeah. not taking anything from Sean, but he, he, he finished, I think I was one up or four to play, and he went one, two, two, and to his eternal credit, you have to give him um, a lot of credit for it, um, but I was devastated by that, because all through the match, I looked as if I had the upper hand, and I just couldn't finish him off, and... You know that was it. it was all over. And believe it or not, I was a, I was there watching that match. I was watching that yeah. match. Ray Murphy had beaten me in the quarterfinals about twenty minutes, and I saw the last six holes of your match. I think it was, but uh, yeah. it was yeah. It's it's it it's amazing that you remember losses. Now I'm going to talk to you about there was other, but there was other close misses as well. RGSC uh, in oh, the stroke play. Yeah, Ray, his pitch to seventeen. <laughs> um, it goes down as one of the greatest he, shots ever. Well, to be honest, in, when I went to Roadstone that day, and that was in, I think that was around 2007. Yes. Um, because um, when I went to Roadstone that day, I, I wasn't playing particularly well going into the tournament. And when I got to Roadstone, and I was in an afternoon, I was in the second half, and Ray had already posted, I think, 17 under, yes, which is an right. immense score in Roadstone. Yes. So when you go out and you're chasing a score like that, it's very difficult. And, and I played well, and I shot 15. Um, and when I went out, and I was out last with Ray, and giving Ray Murphy two shots is, is too much. Yeah. And but I, I wasn't under any pressure. I didn't really think I had a, a chance. I didn't that year. I didn't fancy myself. I just yeah. played. And by the time we got to about the thirteenth, yeah. Ray had kind of leveled off a little bit. He 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 was, you know, he was just passing mm-hmm. along. And I got a couple of opportunities, but I always remember we went we went to the seventeenth, which was the seventy first hole, and we were can't remember the scores. There was a guy called um, Carl from Collins uh, from Castletown was already in, yeah, with a score. I think he was I think he was twenty under, and we were both twenty under playing seventeen. Yes, and on the seventeenth, anyone that knows out, it's a really difficult pitch, and I hit a really good ball down there, and I. I got on a lucky break, pulled away from the hole and left myself a really tricky put down the hill. And Ray hit probably the best pitch that, against me that I've ever seen because he hit it, he stone dead on 17. Yeah. And stone dead on 17 in Roadstone is an immense shot and it put the pressure on me. Uh, I think the way I was playing, if Ray had been chipping up and got us through, I'd have fancied me put for a two yes. to take the lead going up the last. Yeah. And... Uh, but it didn't happen that way. And then when we went up the last race, he had a good ball into a couple of feet. Although I got the two on the last, he was never going to miss. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel unlucky there. But again, yeah. um, I can't take that away from Ray. Like, what, Ray to finish 2-2 in that, search, in that situation. Yeah. And, and and then Ray then, actually a few years later, he, he done me in, in the semi-final in, in Luke and in, in a match. I remember it, yeah. You I were, three you were ahead up, up think, yeah, four up turning, yeah. And he, he produced nine in a row from nowhere. Absolute yeah. from nowhere. And, and again, and he went on to beat Sean Loggins in the final. And, yeah. You know, uh, you know, they were opportunities that probably slipped by. But in saying that, uh, there was a few tournaments over the years that I probably stole on people as well. Yeah, of course. Dublin stole players. And, you know, a few little things got away from me. You know what I mean? But overall, um, I would have loved him to win the stroke play. I'd have loved him to win another match play. Yeah. 
but I, I, I had a lot of success in scratch cups and you know. Yeah. But I loved it, Frank. And and to be honest with you, Frank, ninety percent of the friends I have today are through pitch and putt. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Amazing, amazing. You uh, come here. Yeah, I'm so. going to say something as well. Two thousand and eight in Tullamore, you had a great chance as well. You could have really done damage that day. You started like a train in the in the playoff as well. They, that was the year I won it. You, you, you. Yeah, I, 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 stuff, you should, you I could have, could have caught me there as well. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't think I was really in. The, I, I tell you, yes, yes, Frank. But at the same time, I think in the second round there, I think I shot a forty-one. Yeah, um, that's right. yeah. And, and that got me in there. I think I'd done 51 41. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's hard to follow up a big score. And, yeah. and although I got a good start in the, in the, in the playoff, playoff yeah. it, it used up so much energy to get the 41 to get myself back into the tournament that I don't look back on that as a tournament that um, I let slip or anyone yeah. took on me. I think, I, I think, and I'll say it to you, the best player on the day won, I think Paul O'Gorman. <laughs> Might, might argue, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's he, fair he, enough. Yeah. He uh, he was unlucky as well. But look, that's the way someone's going to lose, and, and that's yeah. good. It's we, fantastic. Thanks, some of them. We mentioned it earlier. We play a game where ninety nine point nine percent of the time, when you stand on the first tee, you are not going to win. It's a game of perpetual loss, isn't it? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. If you get a fella plays for twenty years and he wins three match plays, he's a great player. He's lost yeah. seventeen times. Yes, exactly. So like yeah. it's. it's it, it, it's one of them, like you know what I mean. But uh, but some great great friends over, and 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 still lifelong friends, and and I've numbers in my phone from, and even the car club, the John Johns, and and the Ray Murphys, and and go down to Liam O'Donovan's and Billy yeah. Buckley, and all. Oh, we have all their numbers. They we all keep in touch, although we don't see each other that much. But they've all become great friends, and and, and that you know, like yourself, and and that you know what I mean. So it's, it's I, okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't take it back for anything. Now let's ask you the hard questions. Why why did you stop playing? Oh, <laughs> why did I stop? I didn't stop playing really for any particular reason. I uh, I stopped. I, I probably lost a, a little bit of loss of form. I, yeah. I won't lie to you there. I started to struggle a little bit. Um, my putting was never. My putting was always reasonably strong. I started to struggle um, in general and get frustrated. Number one, um, I think when you play something for so long too, I, I felt I needed a break. Um, and then. Um, other things come into your life family as well. And we, yeah. Your family and and stuff like that. And and there was there was an occasion about two years ago, um, where the match play, you know, was always on the June bank holiday weekend. Yeah. But um our young lad here, Jack, he plays darts and um he plays youth darts. He's only he's only ten now at the moment, but he was only eight at the time and he, he we got him into um he plays for Carlo because it's the nearest that he can get. He's on a, a youth mm-hmm. thing down there and he got picked on one of their teams and they were to play on the June Bank holiday weekend. Yeah. And I kind of had to think about it and I thought it was, he loved it and, and the fact he loved it and we said we'd, I'd go with him. And so therefore I didn't enter the match play because even if I qualified, I was caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. And I, and yeah. I just, and then Jack actually took to the darts. He, he still plays a little bit, obviously with the COVID thing, he's not playing. Yeah. Um, and I got to know a few people, and I kind of got involved in that a little bit. Um, but this year, I, I went up to Glenville this year, and I rejoined and, uh, as normal. And I think I would have played a bit more this year. Unfortunately, the COVID thing has come in, Marion now, and all this beyond to me about going back playing. And yeah. and I think I will. I think Great. I will sooner rather than later. And and but when you play to a standard, as you know yourself, Frank, it's it's, yeah. it's very hard if you go out and don't do yourself justice. Yes. Um. And and I still think I should be shooting the scores I was shooting. 15 years ago but I'll probably never shoot them again but it, there could be never say you never. know just never right. say never yeah. I'm going to ask you, you know. I'm going to name out a few few events now where you were unbeatable and I'm going to ask you um, I'm going to ask you to talk me through just two events that I want to talk about I want to talk about the Intercounty mm-hmm. Championship in Glenville the year yourself and nice. Dunscombe played together talk me through that do yeah. you remember much about that do you remember the score that you had do you I remember? do I, I I do play. I remember a lot about that one. Actually, that was up in Glenville, and yeah. uh, I was playing well going into that. Was your score twenty four under? Was your score twenty four under for thirty six? Yeah, I twenty four under. I I had I actually had a, a forty four and a forty. I actually yeah. played at Ray Murphy, but Dunstan oh, sorry, had yeah. a great score Dunstan as well. Would, and Dunstan I and, twenty or uh, twenty one or something or twenty two. Twenty twenty one under or something yeah. like that. But I I remember um, I I I playing well going into it and Cork. Um, 
I always get on well with the Cork lads. I have to say, every one of them, I don't think they had a problem. But they were dominating for so long, and Dublin were so desperate to to try and end their drought. We hadn't won in a long time, and we went up to Glenville. And it was just one of them days when it just clicked. Yeah. Uh, and I shot the 84, and to this day, it was probably, probably my best performance individually um, over 36 holes ever. You know the type of way, and unfortunately, it didn't make any difference because Cork still won. But, um, uh, it was, like that it day, was awesome. That day. It was I, awesome. Yeah. I had the eighty-four. Dunscombe was around a six eighty-seven, but Murphy yeah. had a ninety, and he didn't even yeah. look to be playing well. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> he's like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that, now, and that's the way. You know the type of way. Okay, you're you were also on the World Cup winning team that um, mm. won the World Cup with Paul O'Brien and with Ray as well. That's obviously. Yeah, yeah. A huge achievement for you too. Do you remember that fondly? That was that one of your. I best do days? actually. I, I do remember that fondly. We that was over in Holland. Yes. Um, I think two thousand and eight or something like that. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not That's really correct, sure. Yeah. I think it was two thousand. Was it two thousand and eight? It was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, two thousand and eight. Yeah. No, oh, no. Um, well, Paul and Ray. Well, Ray. Is, when you're on a team with Ray, I've always just and Ray just, Ray just doesn't play badly. You know. So and. Yeah. Paul O'Brien, Paul O'Brien was so dedicated and, and, he, was and inspired he was so thrilled that year, to be on yeah. the team. Yeah. And he was on fire. And, and the three-man team, we were strong over there. Um, I didn't play brilliant. I'm going to be honest, on, on that particular weekend, I didn't think I played really that well. I, I think of the three, I was probably the weakest of the three on that. On that. But we were a strong side. But it was it was a fantastic um, yeah, look to get a world championship or anything, whether... At anything, it's it's down there on the mantelpiece and it's never taken away from you. So yeah, and and we had a great, um, great, um, good team spirit there. And we can remember even with the managers and all that. And and Paddy Brown was there. Yeah. He was managing that team, gentleman, and yeah. he was yeah, absolute gentleman. And, and to see the tears in his eyes, so that made it all worthwhile. You know, the type of way. So Paddy Brown, a couple of shaky moments in it, but we. we yeah. got to, Paddy Brown was 80 last yeah. Monday, so we want to wish Paddy a happy birthday as well. Oh, um, happy birthday, Paddy, from, from everybody here, Paddy. <laughs> from everybody. Um, Derek, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I really enjoyed our little chat. I hope people will get something out of it. Uh, please come back playing. We miss you. I miss you. Yeah. You know, it's it, it would be great to have you back and your, your lovely wife as well. And hopefully the kids will start playing as well. Um, I'm going to uh, end every one of these conversations with um, with a question. I asked it of Skinner and John O'Leary a, a couple of weeks ago. I want you mm-hmm. to name um, your best player from the bygone eras. What I'm talking about is pre-92, pre-95, that kind of an era. Mm-hmm. And then I want you yeah. to name your greatest player of all time. Be, and we'll finish on that note is that okay so from the past okay. who was your greatest player that you've encountered okay well, uh, influenced well, by? well the, when, when when i came into the game kind of into the early 80s um a lot of the players uh, kind of, of the gussie carlins and, and the tj reardons and and the michael forrest they're before my year uh, the gussie Car- like, so it's hard for me to comment on them so i don't want to I, i'm course. not purposely leaving them out in the first two halves probably in the in the 80s, coming into the mid-90s, um, I, I'd have to say, in the I, I can't split David Hayden and Sean Downs in the first half. I, David Hayden, for about four or five years in the late 80s, was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, so, therefore, David Hayden. I can't leave Sean Harkins out. Sean Harkins in, up in Dublin, um, and, and and he won three national championships, Sean did. Sean was an absolute unbelievable player. He's a great, um, great guy as well, and great player, absolutely great but, player. Yeah. But the nod would have to go to Downs because of okay. the, what he did to me in front of me. Um, yeah. I'd have to say Downs in the first half, closely followed, very hard to split the others, but very closely followed by Davey and, and Sean Harkins. Um, as I go on then into the latter years, I think sure overall, I think it's unfair not to let records prove for itself. And Ray Murphy has been unbelievable. And I think he's been there for the longevity. Yes. I think he's been there from, he won in 98. And to be honest, if they, if they held the championship this year, you wouldn't back again. No. Um, and, uh, and for that reason, in my opinion, the best player ever has to be Raymond Murphy. Excellent. Listen, Frank, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. It's great talking to you, and I look forward to seeing everybody again really soon. Thanks, Eric. An absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. All right.
and I like uh, talk to I you like soon. That.